My name is Justine McCabe. I'm from the <laughs> Green Party of Connecticut and the co-chair of the International Committee of the Green Party of the United States. I want to welcome you all to our uh, gathering tonight. I want to thank uh, the co-chairs, Hillary Kane, uh, particularly here, for organizing all of this. So give her a round of applause, please. And Brian Bittner also, who's been very active working in this. Where is Brian? He or other, where is Brian? Uh, he went to dinner. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Brian. And I uh, thank uh, the uh, steering committee and the national committee for all their efforts in, in uh, coming together for this great presidential nominating convention. Uh, I'd like to also introduce my co-chair, Julia Willebrand from New York. <laughs> Julia has been a great uh, candidate for mayor and comptroller in New York, getting about 105,000 votes in the last election. And we have uh, various members of the IC committee, uh, International Committee here. Would you all raise your hands so I can just say, there we have um, Vivek Ananthan from Pennsylvania, Mike Feinstein from California, John Rensenbrink, a, a real founder of our party and the committee from Maine. We have Bob Marsh from California. We have Bahram Zandi uh, from Virginia, Maryland, <laughs> keep forgetting. We have uh, David Schwartzman from DC. Hi, David. Uh, we have Greg Garrett from Rhode Island, and anyone else that I've missed? Oh, sorry. Sand Everett from California. It's hard to see with the lights. Michael Canny. Where's Michael? He's back here. Oh, hi, Michael. Michael from Florida. Anyone else from the International Committee here whom I've missed? All right. Um, I, um, I'm happy to say we have uh, a few international green guests here who are going to say a few words about um, their party, the electoral status of their party, and what issues their particular uh, party uh, is focused on. So um, to start, um, I'd like uh, to introduce Dr. Joachim Denk Denkinger, who is the Deputy Secretary General of the European Green Group in the uh, European Parliament. So uh, Joachim, would you like to come and say a few words? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. This morning I was still in Brussels where the European Parliament uh, is and uh, now it's very late in my country where I come from so <laughs> uh, I will be very short but I'm very happy to be here and I bring you all the best wishes of the uh, group in the European Parliament and we want to encourage you because we see that there is something going on in the US and from the Greens which is serious and I know you are very, you're in a very difficult political situation because of the party system, which is totally different from what we have. We wouldn't be there where we are now in Europe if we would have the same system as you. We have in the European Parliament 59 deputies from 15 different countries. And uh, this is what we work for, to have a united Europe, to overcome nationalism and to build uh, Europe. But Europe is not enough anymore, I think. We have a governance uh, in the world which needs really global coordination. And I think the Greens must be a player in this global coordination. And, <laughs> and we should really and, uh, work together and strengthen our, our ties uh, between uh, uh, the US and Europe to start with. When I look at your uh, program and your platform summary, I see many familiar things. The Green New Deal is everywhere, in Europe as well. I think we really have to realize that we are in a difficult situation uh, where we have uh, to face a situation uh, to fight a triple crisis, which is economic crisis, but which is to the same extent an ecological crisis and it's a social crisis. And if we don't manage to really fight all these three dimensions of the same crisis together and at the same time with the integrated approach, I think we will not overcome this crisis. And this is the same for the US and for Europe. And I hope we can inspire each other and we can learn from each other. And I wish you a very interesting convention. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was not looking there before. Sorry. Um, we have uh, Tucson Hinvi from uh, Benin with us. Tucson, would you say a few words? Welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Toussaint Hinvi. I'm a chair and founder of Green Party of Benin. Benin is uh, in West Africa, a little country, nine million people between Nigeria and Ghana. We founded this party, Green Party, since uh, 15 years ago. You will be very surprised why we can build this party where the people can uh, not access uh, to education, where the people want uh, to eat, where the people don't access to health, where the people, uh, maybe 19% cannot access to education. That is the question you will ask. Oh, why you go to build the Green Party inside this situation? We want to tell you, we African, we are born green. Yeah, we are born green because we took all our food from the natural resources. The food, what we want to eat, the fish, the meat, the everything. Since two years ago, two years and 30 years ago, we have so many problems with the corporation cooperation from European, cooperation from USA. You know the situation about uh, Shell and uh, oil extractor in uh, East, in Nigeria. You know the situation of Total F in Nigeria. You know the, the West, West, uh, West uh, transportation and uh, come to put in our countries. My countries were the only the first country who, where we bring the West nuclear from uh, Russia is 1987 from France to put in our area. Since uh, 1990, where uh, we are starting with democracy, we are green activists. We say, okay, we have two choices: don't talk and everything will be destroyed with the corporation and our uh, government. You know our government is different from your government. It's very corrupted government in almost in Africa. But with democracy, we can talk. We have start to talk since 1990 when I built the Benin Association for Nature Conservation and uh, 1996, the Green Party now. You will be surprised a second time what you are coming to do here in USA, with in the USA convention. Yeah, I'm coming here because it's important for us in uh, Benin, in Africa in general, as green, to tell to you your responsibility with the green in South, Af in South, in the development country, especially in Africa. Your responsibility is not the donation but your responsibility is more than the donation. is especially to, to be a good relationship with yours. Because when I, I try to find the cooperation in my country, I can be arrested. And uh, you have to talk. If you don't do nothing, okay, I will die maybe in the cost. I, I will spend all my time under the dictatorial government is in general in Africa. But when the, you start to talk in, in American as green, to meet your, your people, to meet your senator, to meet your government, to say, okay, these people, you must talk about his situation. The government say, okay, wh what is the problem? He know the problem, but now he want to know more of the problem. And now our government is afraid 
because our government is always afraid of the USA government and the uh, European Union because we bring most of our government, corrupt government, bring most of the funds from Europe, European Union and uh, American US ID. Don't, that is the first situation. It's very important. I'm trying, I was being several times in European Parliament. I talked to the European Green. I'm not happy for you because you are now take a good position in Europe. You are maybe, I don't know, 50, 50 members in the Parliament. You are, you are, you take a position in the government in the past uh, in Germany, in the past and now in uh, Belgium, now in France, but during when you get a good position, you don't do nothing for Africa. Nothing. The situation is same. It, 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 it continues to be the same. The poverty is continue to grow. The corruption is in progress. The democracy is not going very well. I'm not happy. I'm, tell, I'm telling to my friend uh, Juan, when I was being in Dakar, he said, yes, we need to talk because you don't have time. You spend all the time in the European with your, your, your own situation. In America, you have to be careful. Don't make the same with our green in European. Don't spend all your time for your own situation. You have also the responsibility outside the USA. That I'm coming here to tell for you. Of course, you are still uh, small today, but you will grow. Yeah. But during, uh, during when you will grow, you have to know your responsibility with the development countries. And when we will take a high position, I hope you will make something different for our friend in European Union. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. And now, thank you, Toussaint. Um, we appreciate your struggle, actually. Um, going to another part of the world, we have Rick Leckinger with us. Where is Rick? He's from New Zealand. He's the co-chair of the National uh, Policy Committee of the New, New Zealand Green Party. Welcome. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Karanga mai, mihi mai, aku rangatira i te whano kakariki. That's you all. Tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto katoa. I bring warm Pacific greetings from the 14 members of parliament in our caucus. From the from the Green Party's National Executive and from the Green Party's National Policy Committee, which I co-chair. Warm Pacific greetings to you all. It's a real privilege to be here. My name is Richard Leckinger, and this is a double homecoming for me, because not only am I with the Green Party family from around the world, but back in 1992, before I emigrated to New Zealand, I lived five blocks that way on Park Avenue. <laughs> for five years. So it really is a homecoming for me. It's a very special privilege. Um, however, I'm here to talk about New Zealand, which is my home at the moment. I want to acknowledge what Joaquim said because the triple crisis we're all facing is what we all share, no matter how you slice it. There is a social crisis, there is an environmental crisis, and there is an economic crisis. And there's a political crisis. And there's a political crisis brewing because of all of that. And they're all strands of the same cloth. They're all interrelated, and we're all facing them in our own weird and wonderful ways. What the Green Party in Aotearoa, New Zealand, is facing right now is privatization of public assets. We've managed to hang on. We've managed to hang on to a few. Um, right now, we're fighting a war to in get a citizens-initiated referendum to prevent the sale of our energy companies. Um, five out of the seven energy companies are still 100% state-owned, and the government wants to flog oh, only 49% of the shares, but only to Kiwis, which of course is not legal. Um, uh, to New Zealanders, yes. Yes, we're going to sell them to mom and pop investors, even though they already own them. 
That's what we're up against. We're up against the stock standard neoliberal agenda that uh, many of you are familiar with. Right now we're building private prisons, we're building private schools, and actually we're allowing American corporations to do all that. And we're, si and we're signing 30-year contracts and, and, and locking, locking those assets into, into private hands. We're privatizing the profit and socializing the risk as per normal. So you all are familiar with that. Um, probably less encouraging is we're trying really hard to catch up with you all in terms of inequality. <laughs> we're working very hard to catch up with you in terms of imprisonment. Mm. Yeah, and that, in, and that includes imprisoning um, you know, more of our minority Pacific Islanders and Maori um, than we do our white folk, of course. Um, all those social issues, th they're very familiar because we are, of course, a British colonial um, we share a similar history. <laughs> we, we share a similar history to the U.S. in that regard, so we're just behind by a hundred years on, on some of these agendas. But let me move on to something far more positive than that. In November 2011, we had a general election. We do it every three years, not every four years. We increased our vote by 58 <laughs> percent. It can be done. That's my message to you from Aotearoa. It can be done. Six years our party has worked aggressively on messaging about not talking down to the voters, about not talking over the voters' heads. All those cliches that you hear about, we worked on it very, very hard. We've got two wonderful co-leaders, uh, Russell Norman and Materia Ture. Um, we have a co-leadership model, so and at the top of all our committees, you've got a pair. Men and women. That's why I'm the, that's why I'm the co-convener of the National Policy Committee. Yes, I was ambivalent when I first got involved with the Green Party, but now I'm a true believer in the co-convener model. Definitely. That gender balance thing actually makes a hell of a difference at the top levels. It's really important. Um, so that's something to celebrate for, from, from our end. Um, but yeah, 60% growth, and that's following, um, I think it was 25% uh, growth in 2008. Um, we've got 14 MPs now, and the press has decided that we are the legitimate opposition in New Zealand now. <laughs> it's very exciting when the mainstream press says something like that, and actually they come to your co-leader before they go to the leader of the opposition. And that's, that's pretty sharp. The Labour Party in New Zealand is in crisis at the moment, so we're having a bit of a honeymoon. We're not, we're not resting on our laurels. We're actually preparing to go into government at the next election because that's what's going to happen. Very likely to happen. I don't want to curse the day. Yeah, I know. Knock on wood. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, I don't want to curse that, but we're, we're actually preparing as a Green Party to say, okay, what's it going to be like to be in a coalition government in New Zealand? What's it going to be like to have ministers in cabinet who are going to be bound to other rules other than party policy and party rules. Those are the issues we're grappling with right now. Isn't that a wonderful thing to be struggling with? <laughs> and we're trying to learn from the German Greens, we're trying to learn from the French, we're trying to learn from the Irish, all those other folks who have gone into parliaments and, and succeeded in some ways, struggled in other ways. We're trying to learn those lessons so that, uh, well, so that we can get in there and make a hell of a difference. But we have made a difference. We've had a memorandum of understanding with our right-wing National Party government. We've got a home insulation program that's uh, insulated, uh, I think, 150,000 um, low-income homes. And out of, a, out of only 1.9 million houses in the country, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good progress. There's still another 900,000 to go, but 800,000 to go, but we're getting there. Um, so we've had a lot of victories. It's been a really exciting time to be a Green in New Zealand. And we're just going from strength to strength. And uh, I just hope and pray that when I fill out my absentee ballot as an American one day, there's actually some sort of proportional voting system. Yes. And, and I'm voting Greens <laughs> into Congress. That's, that's my personal dream, sitting at my, in my lovely home in Pacific Auckland. Um, <laughs> Well, it's not a bad dream, is it? It'll happen someday. It'll happen someday. Um, that's probably all I have to say. Um, things are looking up in New Zealand. It's a very exciting time to be green. I just, I just hope that some of that infectiousness rubs off on you all for your big election year, because it's so important to stay energized. Um, I'll just wrap up.
in Maori as we as we always do in the Green Party, because um, we always acknowledge the Tangata Fenua, the local people of New Zealand, the original um, inhabitants. Yes, wave wave on that one. So Engamana, Engareo, Rorangatira Ma, Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenatato Katoa. Kiora. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, we also have with us um, Klaus uh, Linsenmeyer, Klaus, who is the executive director of the Heinrich Bull Foundation here in the, st in the United States. Heinrich Bull has offices all around the world. Maybe you could come and speak a little bit to educate our folks about what you do. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm very thrilled to be here. It's great. And uh, it's not what you are doing. We don't teach, we organize dialogues. Um, you know, the foundation, we are based in Germany, uh, in Berlin, and we have meanwhile 30 international offices. And our job is to promote green politics worldwide. And we do that by dialogue because situations are different. Uh, they're different in Europe than they are here in other parts of the world. So we are only can organize progress uh, in the form of a dialogue, not in the form of, of uh, a teaching. Um, you may have heard that um, the Greens have been pretty uh, successful in re regional elections in this year. Our greatest success was last year when we got the first Green governorship in Germany at all. So this is what's really great success for Green politics and the great... <laughs> yeah. And a great uh, success for mainstreaming uh, green politics, and we, it can be done if it, it's done properly. It's uh, uh, a lot of work, but it's it's great. What we are doing here is to talk about um, experience we uh, faced in Germany and in Europe. We are a pro-European party and a pro-European foundation. I think the most pro-European in all the German party uh, uh, families. And uh, so our commitment is very much uh, strengthening the dialogue uh, between Europe and the US. And uh, uh, that's what we are doing. We are talking about uh, the successes, the failures, the uh, lessons learned in uh, Europe and how we can translate this here into the US uh, reality, which seems likely similar, but it's very different than it's what we find at home. Um, I'm living here now in DC for three and a half years. It's a great city, a great country. Um, the people are much better than its politics. And it's, uh, it's very great being here. And uh, a final word on the campaign. I think it's unlikely that we see a green uh, president at the end of the year. Um, but we shouldn't be too frustrated um, because it's a long way. I admire very much the party and the campaign for their hard work under these uh, very different uh, circumstances. But my feeling is that it's not only us, it's not only you, there are more, m much more people out there who are very much frustrated about this two-party system, which is not in the Constitution, which is not the Founding Fathers' idea. It has been an usurpation of two parties, and it's unfair. And at the end of the day, it's undemocratic in one of the oldest democra democracies in, 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 uh, in the world. And so far, I strongly believe in, in fellow Americans here that there is change, is real change is possible towards a multi-party system, a more fairer democracy in the social terms, in ecological policies, but also in the electoral politics. And I think there a need is, uh, a change is needed. If you see in uh, presidential elections, half of the population doesn't take part anymore. This is not what democracy is all about. So I wish you good luck and we are on your side. And uh, I hope all the best, at least, I need to get some percent more in the November elections. We do what we can do to, to support that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Klaus. Um, I just wanted to mention that, unfortunately, two Canadian Greens were hoping to be here tonight. They'll be here tomorrow for the, uh, the rest of the meetings. Uh, Johan Hamels, uh, who is the co-chair of the International Committee of, of Canada and the former, sorry, uh, the former treasurer of the European Green Party, uh, and also Jean Cloutier, who is from Quebec, uh, and we have a very nice uh, memory of our uh, IC going to the Federation of the Green Parties of the Americas that was held in uh, Quebec in 2008. So Jean uh, helped host that meeting, so we'll return the favor when he comes uh, during the weekend. I'd like to um, close um, by saying that I have a very um, 
a very good memory of European Green uh, members of Parliament coming here in 2003 in the lead up to the Iraq invasion, urging uh, our country not to do this. It was very moving to me. I think there were, there were a lot of people came and, and really lobbied in that direction. Uh, unfortunately, despite our best efforts, um, certainly we as the party of peace here in the United States and hundreds of millions of people opposed that war. So I'm going to reach out to all of you international Greens, especially from Europe, and help us to make sure there is no war in Iran. So I, I urge you to no war in Iran. No war in Iran. That, that there is uh, not a repeat of that uh, event. Uh, I, I thank you all for um, coming, and I encourage you all to just uh, meet with one another and talk, and I appreciate all our international guests for being here. So thank you very much, all of you. Hey, uh, my name is Mike Feinstein. I'm a Green from California. And this is a T-shirt from the Global Greens Congress that just occurred in Dakar, Senegal, back at the end of March and early April where we had Greens from about 70 countries who came from all over the planet. And part of the reason we did so is we did so to celebrate the growth of Green Parties in Africa. We have Green Parties in most of the countries there. And we're going to take this announcement and then finish the story. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's called green anarchism. So the, the really interesting thing is we had this uh, meeting in Africa, in Senegal, and the Green Party there, for those of you who follow politics in Senegal, there had been a two-term president who had decided to run for re-election in, um, in this year's election, and there was term limits. There was a two-term term limits, and yet he got the Supreme Court there to allow him to run a third time. So the opposition forces of, you know, just pretty much everybody else who wanted to overturn that government got together and the Green Party was part of that coalition. So why do I bring that up? The Green Party was part of this coalition. There was a popular response and the people overthrew their 85 year old two term, um, you know, essentially dictator who had been elected. And when the new government came in, the day after the Global Greens Congress was over, they announced that the new environmental minister of Senegal was going to be Haider El Ali, who has been one of the founders of the Green Party in Senegal. So now in Africa, the environmental minister of the Green Party in Senegal, uh, or the environmental minister of, um, of Senegal is a Green Party member. He's been working on oceanic health for years. So even in Africa, we've got people at the top. Let's make it happen in the United States as well. <laughs>